A large part of the meditation lies in the perceptions, the images you hold in mind. For example, with the breath. As I mentioned last night, think of yourself wearing the breath rather than you being in one part of the body, in the head, looking at the breath someplace else. Think of the breath being all around you. When you breathe in, you're surrounded by breath. You breathe out, you're surrounded by breath. That changes the mechanics of the breathing, changes the messages that the brain is sending to the muscles. It enables the breath to be smoother, more continuous, allows the different breath energies in the body to be more coordinated. This illustrates that principle that if you work with perceptions and ignorance, they can lead to suffering. But if you use your perceptions knowledgeably, they can be the path to the end of suffering. So bring some knowledge to what you're doing. Of course, knowledge means seeing things in terms of the Four Noble Truths. Where are there stress? What in the mind is adding to the stress? What's arising along with the stress passes away together with it in the mind. And what can you do to change that, to stop doing that? Well, to see that, you have to get the mind concentrated and mindful and discerning, which is why we follow the path. So the Four Noble Truths are all right here, if you apply them. If you don't, all you've got is just the, the craving and the suffering. There's no path, there's no cessation. You're walking around with two noble truths, and they don't seem very noble because you deny them. You're looking for the cause of suffering someplace else. But if you take the noble attitude that the suffering that's weighing down the mind comes from your own actions, but you can also develop actions that counteract those causes. Then you're getting closer and closer to the actually realizing the cessation of suffering, something that really is possible. So bring knowledge to what you're doing. Reflect on what you're doing. Sometimes you hear that meditation is just a simple matter of reflecting on things. Well, your reflection has to have some foundation, it has to have a focus, and the breath provides that. As you look at the breath, then you can start watching the mind looking at the breath. And that way you see a lot of interesting things you would have missed otherwise. That's how you bring knowledge to these processes, and how the activities of the mind can become a path. 